the spirit of worship. Hallelujah. Will you invoke your presence right now, God? Right now, God. Spirit, have your way in this place. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. You are
praise you, hallelujah. We just want to praise you. Thank you, Jesus, for all you've done for us. Has he done anything for you? Do you want to just tell God thank you for all you've done for me? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just want to praise you. Thank you, Lord. Just want to praise you forever and ever for all you've done for me. Hallelujah. Come to thank the Lord and praise Him. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Just want to praise you. Just want to praise.
Yes, 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 yes. Anybody sold out for the Lord? Hallelujah. Anybody's heart fixed? Anybody's mind made up to go on with the Lord? Hallelujah. Come on, say so I'm here.
God now is preaching time and we thank you that the word that's going to come forth is going to be ready and it is ready to meet the hearts and the needs of your people that have made it even to this 28th day of April not because we've been good not because we've been kind but only because you've been merciful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we take this opportunity to say, move us out of the way, yeah. that we might hear your word, yeah. that the engraft word of God may penetrate our hearts, that we walk out of here changed. Yeah, sure. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Thank you for the messenger, yeah. Minister Brian Lemons, who's coming to bring the word, yeah. that we might hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say to the church. Thank you now. Consecrate his hands, consecrate his feet, consecrate his mind, consecrate his heart, that he might speak a ready word unto us. We thank you for the man of God in the man. We pray that you bless him and keep him now in Jesus' name. Amen. Won't you receive our son, Minister Brian Charles? It is a, a tremendous honor uh, to be in front of you guys this morning. Uh, a complete blessing uh, that God would trust me uh, to deliver a word to you guys today by speaking to Pastor and placing it on his heart to say, put him up. Uh, I take that, that trust not lightly. Uh, if you know anything about me, man, I, as I've grown, I've come to understand how big it is uh, to be in a position uh, where God trusts you. Amen. All right. You know, that just, you know, that's just don't fall on anybody. Because you will end up finding out God trusting you in areas of your life or positions of your life where you don't feel like you see. You feel like you ain't ready yet. You know, I've always used the example of, of you know becoming a dad, you know, becoming a father, you know, the birth of my, my son, you know, I didn't think I was ready yet. I had a, a three year plan. Three years, probably making a little bit more. It'd be the perfect time to have a little one. Until one day I said, whatever God, whatever you want to do, you know, let it happen. And then here he is. And now I find myself in this position that I felt I wasn't ready for. But to know he trusts me enough to place a life of me in my hands. That's great. So if you're in that area in your life and you find yourself, you know, like, I don't know if I can handle this. Just look at it like this. God is trusting you to handle it. All right? It's not by accident, it's not by chance. He's trust, he's putting his trust in you. You can handle it. You, you, you can handle it. You can handle it. It's been tailor fit just for you. God trusts you. And it's an honor to be trusted by God just to recognize that power. Well, I'm gonna give you some words. I'm gonna prove the word that I've given you. I'm going to pray that you receive the word and then await the testimony to come back from the word that was received by the believers. I've always said this one thing and this one thing alone. I'm not trying to tell you how to live your life. I just want to encourage you while you're living your life. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 1. We're going to go to verse 16. Working double duty. Thank you, choir, for setting the atmosphere. Uh, it's times when I be at, at work, and, uh, Sister Nate, they, they bring forth music that I, I've never heard before. So I, I go home and I download and I listen to it while I'm at work. I call it like I love you so much. You, you just influence my life. So when I'm in worship, you know, it's there, it, there's no time that you cannot be in worship. No time that you cannot be in worship. Which means all the time, it's a possibility for you to be in worship. Just to get you closer to God. And I encourage everyone, hallelujah, that 
to just tighten up the relationship. That's right, Nico. Amen. Verse 16. Do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Chapter 2, verse 6. It said, chapter, keep, continue chapter 2, verse 1. And ye, and you, he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which ye once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also... We all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who was rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace are you been, by grace you have been saved, and raised us up together, and made us sit together. In the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Go to chapter 3, verse 14. Give you some scripture that I'm going to prove it to you. We're going to go and take you somewhere. Verse 14 it says, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant ye according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit. In the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that ye may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Turn to Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Verse 19 says, Behold, I give you the authority. If you read the KJV Bible, it says power there. But the Greek definition of power is authority. So in my Bible says authority says, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Heavenly Father, I thank you right now that you bless this word. That you, Lord Father God, hallelujah, use up any, Lord Father God, and all energy that I may have to deliver a word. Spirit, have your way right now through me. Let the man decrease so that the spirit may increase. And that the words that I speak, Lord Father God, the words that come out of my mouth, hallelujah, are from the throne itself, Lord Father God, to enrich, to encourage, Lord Father God, to enlighten your people of God. We pray that there's no, no distractions. Satan, you have to go. There is nothing that is going to stop us, hallelujah, from getting closer to you. Today is the day, Father, hallelujah. And this is our breakthrough moment. We give you the glory, honor, and praise. We believe, we receive, and it is so in Jesus' name. Amen, hallelujah. And it is so. Hallelujah. For quick, for those who are taking note, I, I promise you, if you give this one right here, it's going to help you. It's going to help you to understand the position that you're in. 
and help you overcome and break through those barriers you feel that you're being held back. If you need a title, you can title it. Uh, I think of a good title. I think of a good title. The authority that I have. The authority that I have. Amen. Amen. In Ephesians, if we go back to the Ephesians, we see, hallelujah, that Paul is speaking here. And the one thing I love about Paul, or that I get about Paul, is how, if you know anything about the trip that he made to Damascus, he was famous for one thing, and then it's all of a sudden, the Lord comes into his life on a trip, and everything about him gets rearranged. And he becomes filled with this knowledge, this understanding, hallelujah, that he feels that he has to convey. Now, the thing I love about Paul is that the message that he preached was to the believer to handle the situation. Not to say God or pray to God to handle the situation, but for you to handle the situation. It was more of a delegated type message. See, we all know about the cross. That's where Jesus died. And a lot of us, and it's not our fault, but through, you know, churches or bad teaching or just not, just being in a place where there's been a closed atmosphere, a lot of people stay at the cross. They never make it to the tomb. Because if you stay at the cross, the cross only symbolizes death. That's the truth. So if you never make it past the cross, all you're going to have is just death. If you go past the cross to the empty grave, you will see the manifestation of God's power. Because he's alive. But first lady, you can't hang at the tomb too long. Because if you stay there, then you'll never make it to Pentecost. With the spirit descended. But you can't hang there either for too long. Because seated at the right hand of the Father is Christ. The right hand is the position of authority. Now, let's go back to verse 16. Of chapter 1 it says do not cease to give thanks for you making mentions of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know the hope of the calling of the riches and the glory of the inheritance in the saints so we got some stuff in store for us yes yes okay Verse 3 says, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places, far above principalities and power and might and dominion in every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come, which means then and now, uh -huh. past and present. Now we also know in the scripture where it says, he, he, he is, was, and is to come. Yes, yes. Which means he's full circle. Yes. He's, he, 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 he planned this thing completely on out. Okay? From the very beginning to the end. Or, uh, for, my, for, my, for my theologians, my, my Bible people, he planned the end, right, first, and then worked backwards to what we would call the beginning. So every aspect in your life is covered. Because he started from the end and worked it. Predestined means I already took care of it. Yes, yes. Because when we look at the destiny of a thing, we look at the future part. But when you put the pre, we know it's there. Pre means begin with means he predestined. He he pre-ended your situation long before you were here. Yes, yes. Now, when you get the understanding of who Christ is then, who he raised up from the grave, right? Set at the authority position. His right hand, above all things, then and now, the tripped out thing is this, and this is what most people have to catch. Paul was writing letters. Okay, so chapter one, which we would call chapter one, we broke, the man broke them up in chapters for references. Uh, it actually just flows into chapter two. 
That's right. That's okay, it's actually a letter. Paul is writing a letter to the church of Ephesus, right? Okay, so we say chapter 2, but it's just a letter. So we continue reading on from 23 when it says, which is his body. Oh, no, no, let's go back to 22 because I don't want you to miss this. 22 says, and he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Now, get this. He put all things under his feet. Whose feet? Jesus. 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 Right? Right. right? We all agree he put all things under Jesus' feet, right? Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, let's keep going. And gave him to be head over all things to the church, yes. which is his body. Yes. Okay? Now, what is Christ's body? The church. The church. The church. What are we? The church. The church. Okay, so Christ is head, mm -hmm. and we are his body, which then would mean we are Christ. We're one with them, right? right? Because the head can't do nothing outside the body, right? Oh, yes. I mean, am I, am I telling you? I mean, you know, if you take your head off, let's see what your body gonna do. So if Christ then is the head, and we are the body, then whatever is under His feet, okay, I'm gonna say it again. Some people got some people there. Today is your day. This is your breakthrough moment. If Christ is head, and he made him, he being God, made him to be head over the church, and the church is then Christ's body, and everything is under Christ's feet because of where he sits, then if we are his body, that which is under Christ's feet is then in return under whose feet? Ain't that authority so? But it gets better. It gets better. It says, and he made, and you, he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. Now he's talking to the believer. He says, and you who, and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of power of the air, the spirit who now works in the son of disobedience. Well, who was they talking about? Hey. Satan is talking about the devil. We are or are at one time or is walking with the devil. And as we've learned from the past pastors that was here, it was actually having a good time doing it. Or still having a good time doing it. Okay, just trying to be real. Yeah. Just keep it real with you. Just keep it real. Keep Verse 3 says, Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. Yeah. Yes. The company you kept. That's right. Which means, you know, if it feel good, I, you know, you, you do it. You know, you really don't want to have to go all the way down the list of sin. But, you know, lust just ain't one thing. It's, it's whatever you cannot keep yourself from doing. I just got to do it. You know, and lust can be anything. I just got to have coke. I just got to have coke. I just, you know, you can't, you can't refrain yourself from doing it. It's a lust of the flesh. So I just got to have this. I just got to have that. I just got to, I just got to, I'm trying to stop this. I'm trying to stop that. But I can't because I just got to, it's a lust of the flesh. And if you're not careful, it can turn, it can overtake you, which then turns into a sin, because that which is their priority, you don't make a priority anymore. That's right, that's right. See, taking care of yourself is a priority, but if you don't, it's a sin. Because the scripture says, know ye not are the temple of the Holy Ghost. The body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, the indwelling place. So, if, if, if first Corinthians 6, 20 says, for you were bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your spirit. See, that's, that's word there. That's not my, that's not me. That's word. This is true, right? So, so the whole purpose of today is to let you know the authority that you have. Because what's killing us today is that we do not know the authority that we have. 
Now, a lot of people think, you know, well, you know, if I can just get to the pastor, now, if I can get pastor to pray for me, this situation will change. If I can get one of the ministers to pray for me, this situation will change. No, it ain't going to work like that, boo -boo. I'm sorry. It's not, you know, uh, when you come to an age of, of knowing, Oh, okay, thank you. That's what I was looking for. When you come to an accountable age, means that you know better. Yes. And this is a church that preaches the word. Yes. You know, the, I can pray for you. It might do good for about a good day yes. or a week. Yes. But the prayer that I pray has to be in agreement to what you have already prayed. Yes. Because it's according to your faith, not mine. Keep it up. Keep it up. It's according to your faith. That's why. It's a good thing to have belong to a church that teaches the word of God. Amen. We have a dynamic preacher. Amen. We have a dynamic pastor who teaches faithfully the word of God, the truth Amen. of the word of God. So no one can say, I didn't know or have a clue. Amen. We all need to be accountable. The only people that really aren't accountable, that our faith actually can override and change the situation, are our kids. Because they don't really understand the concept of faith. But pretty soon they're going to come to an age of accountability in which their faith will have to stand, which means this same message that I'm preaching to you now. You will have to be able to stand on the understanding of I am one with Christ. And that which is under his feet is actually under my feet. Therefore, that which is trying to attack me, I can speak to boldly. In Jesus' name. Not, not God, I need you to take care of this situation for me. No, he's not. My sister text me, my sister uh texted me this uh this statement and said, uh, are you waiting for God to do something that he's waiting for you to do? Uh, rewind. Let's play. Come on. Are you waiting for God to do something that he's waiting for you to do? Yeah. Minister Lemons, are you, wait, 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 hold on. That, that, I, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. What, what, what are you saying? He's giving you the power. That's why you can't stay at the cross. That's why you can't stay at the tomb. That's why you can't stay at Pentecost. You gotta go, you gotta go to the throne room and see where you're seated. He said he seated us. He rose us up with Christ. Okay, so when Christ got up, and when, when we talk about death in the Bible, we're talking about spiritual death. So when Christ rose, when he raised the spirit of Christ up, he rose us up with him. When he set him at the right hand, he set us with him. So where are you seated right now? With Christ in the position of authority. Let me tell you about authority. You ever been uh, you ever been uh, out and the lights were out, the, 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 the traffic lights were out, and there's a police officer out there, right? And the police officer uh, is north, you know, blocks off north and south traffic, and they got to stay steep, right? And then you got east and west, and he's telling east and west to go. You can go. You can go. And he stops east and west and tells north and south to go, right? Well, he ain't doing that out of his own power, because he ain't strong enough. He ain't strong enough to, to hold them cars off. He ain't strong enough. What he's exercising is his position of authority. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this right here gonna get you, brother. Ed. This one right here gonna get you. That's delegated authority, which means somebody gave that to the officer, and because that delegated authority is backing that officer, now who's backing the officer? The city, the state, whole bunch of folk you want to mess with. Now, if I be the believer. Uh -huh. And God has delegated, Christ has delegated the spirit, right, that was in Christ in me upon me receiving him as head and Lord of my life. Then me understanding that I am seated with Christ in a position of authority, that which is trying to attack me has to cease and desist based off the delegated authority that I have. One other example. 
Smith Wigglesworth uh, was a great evangelist uh, uh, of his day and age. Um, they have some of his teachings on the internet. Just go to YouTube, type in Smith Wigglesworth, A. A. Allen, uh, Kenneth Hagen. I mean, if you want to, if you want to see some stuff before we had all this fancy medicine and stuff, but when people went and actually got healed, talking about tent meetings and they get healed right then and there. Look it up. I'm trying to tell you, it'll bless your faith. He says uh, one day he was catching the bus. A lady came out. Or the lady came out of her apartment to catch the bus, and this little dog. Follow right behind her. And little dog was nipping at her ankles and she was saying, look, you can't go. You can't go. You got to go back. You got to go back now. You got to go back. And the dog just kept playing at her ankles. Just kept playing at her ankles. Then the bus started coming. She said, look, baby, you got to go. You got to go. You can't go with me. You can't go. Little dog stayed there nipping at her ankles. And the bus finally pulled up and she said, get it! And the dog dropped his tail and walked on the way. Smith Wigglesworth said without thinking, that's how you got to do the devil. When the devil is nipping at your ankles. When you know to show that this right here ain't God, this don't line up with the promises of God, then you got to treat Satan the same way you got to tell him, get it. You can't stay here. That's when you gotta pull on the word of God, the promises of God, and knowing that as for me and my house, that's when it gotta become a reality to you. Why? Because you have been delegated this authority to speak over these things so they can cease and desist. Don't you know that Satan has to stop? He has to fall in line when you place the name of Jesus on the situation. If you're sitting here and I just keep tapping you like this and you say stop and I keep tapping stop you stop stop and you should leave me alone I keep tapping stop I can take it serious I'm just going to keep on doing it I'm going to keep on doing it until you get frustrated and just and act a fool with me you know and because I, I, I don't want to sow control over you so as long as you just stop I'm going to keep doing it because you in my world I'm actually controlling you Stop. Cut it out. That's all Satan doing to y'all. That's what he's doing to the body of Christ. That's why we're so weak now and not unified. All right. All right. This is why we this is why you keep coming and asking for prayer over the same thing. You don't want nobody to know. You pray for the same thing. I just go get prayer. I just keep coming to get prayer. Until you get frustrated and you just quit altogether. Because you've never understood the authority that Christ placed in you. Because you've always assumed that I can ride on the coattails of someone else. I can ride on Pastor's faith. I can ride on my grandmama's faith. I can never realize that at a certain point in time, it actually stopped. And you've been praying for the same thing over and over. And it's back to God and God, I can't do nothing. Of that situation, I can't. I can't do anything. Christ has no power over the situation. He delegated the authority in you. Prove it, Minister Livingston. Okay, cool. Whatever you loose on heaven, what comes after? I'll loose. Whatever you loose on earth, what comes after? I'll loose in heaven. That's right. That's right. right? That's right. Where you gonna loose it first? On the earth. Before he can do anything. That's right. Someone has to speak it into existence here so he can manifest it. You want some more proof? Turn to Matthew 28, verse 18. Let's look at verse 18 and 19. Let me prove this, this, this power to you. Hallelujah. Authority. Authority, hallelujah, that you have. The word of God says he's dealt us all a measure of faith. A measure of faith. He's not a respectable person, so it ain't like he's giving me more faith than he's yeah. giving Sister Stacy. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the only difference is if I act in it and she doesn't. Right. That's right. That's right. 
you have to use it. Verse 18 says, And Jesus came and spoke. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matthew 28. And Jesus came and spoke to them, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. But wait a minute, Mr. Lemons. It just said right there that all authority is given to, given to Christ. Uh -huh. But the next verse says, Go. So Christ is speaking, and he says, All authority has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. But the next verse says, Go. Well, right there is delegation, heaven. He's telling someone else to go. Go. To go do it. Go, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. He's taking, I got all the power. Now this is what I want you to do. I want you to go. I'm delegating the power that I have. I'm giving it to you. And I want you to go take care of this situation, Bo. Yeah, yeah. Because now you have the authority right. to do so. Right. Turn to Mark. Mark chapter 16. <coughs> Mark chapter 16. We're going to look at verse 15. Talking about this authority that each and every one of us have that, that are believers. All right. That are believers. Mm -hmm. That are saved. That have accepted Him as Lord and Savior in our lives. Verse 15 says, And He said to them, Notice that, them. He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't preach without the spirit. Not the truth. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you'll just Sound. be a fool speaking foolish words. <laughs> It'll have no power. Okay? So here again, we see him doing what? Delegating authority. Turn to James chapter 4. Mm -hmm. Now today, today, we Taking some good notes. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. James chapter 4, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Talking about the believer. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Yes. Who is he talking to? The believer. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. That word flee there? You look up a definition, I found this one definition that says uh, run earnestly away from. Which means if you stand up to the, to the devil, I know most people say, man, the devil is just, you know, he just on me, man. He just he just busy. He just on my heel. Yeah, he is. Look what you just said. Yeah, you yeah. didn't give him authority and permission to me. Say that. Say that. Teach that. Because that's what you believe. That's right. That's right. See, whatever you believe is gonna come out your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. And the authority that God has for you can either work for you or against you. You still got it. He'll, you know, he'll take it back. It'll work for you or against you. So you can speak life. Okay. 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 But the situation you in, you can turn the light on or turn the light off. You can stay in the wilderness all you want or, 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 or realize that today is your day and this is your breakthrough moment. The authority God has placed over everyone in this room that has called Christ to be Lord and Savior of their life. Hallelujah. Your world spins on that which you believe. Now, that which you believe is that which is in your heart. And whatever is in your heart is going to come out of your mouth. So if Satan is doing what he... Satan is just, oh my God, he's just so busy. Yeah, that's right, because he just said he was. And he's going to continue to be until you realize, hallelujah, that I was healed, therefore I am healed. That I'm going to keep dealing with these migraines, these in-laws, these, these parents, and this weed. Drinking, hallelujah, uh, lust, whatever, until you speak the word of God over it and it's signed, sealed, and delivered with the name of Jesus, hallelujah, and you still going to deal with it, hallelujah. Because the authority, hallelujah, has been placed on you. This is the authority that God has given. 
given you. Why? Because he took care of B and then worked his way back to A. My God. Thank you. you want to know why Satan is messing with you? Thank because he knows he can't do nothing with God. He kicked him out of there. He kicked him out of heaven. Say it again. You want to know why Satan messing with you? Because he can't do nothing with Jesus. Right. He rose. Yes, sir. You're the only one he knows rightfully he has no power over, but like to entertain his little, you know, his little, you know, little theatrics in your life. Because we speak to those things. He did the same thing to Christ, man. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah. He tempted him. Christ said he, he tempted him in, in every way. Yeah. In every way he tempted him. Yes, Lord. The same way he tempts you mentally. Yeah. Jesus. You ever thought about that? When Jesus was in the wilderness, he came out of the, the, the fan and Satan started taking him all these different places. It was like teleportation, or was he messing with his mind? Yeah. Was he saying, look, check this out? Envision and showing him these pictures of everything that he can have. But because he was so strong in the word and knowing the authority that was delegated on him from the throne room of God, he was able to fight off the wills of the enemy. God loved you so much, he took care of every aspect of your life. He ain't got to do another thing. Christ ain't got to do nothing new. And now he ain't got to do nothing else for you. All you have to do is walk in it. Well, I've heard walk in it. I've been trying to walk in it. You've been trying to walk in it? That might be the problem. You've been trying. See, when I try something, that means I'm operating in my power. That's right. Am I lying? No, true. If I'm trying to do something, if I'm trying to do something, that means I'm operating in my power, in my strength. And a lot of people get frustrated as believers. Like, oh, well, I'm trying to stop this. You know, I'm trying to get together so I can go to church. You know, I'm trying to get together so I can, you know, get together with, with Jesus. You know, I'm, I'm just trying to get. Like I'm trying to get my life straight. I'm trying. To, you've been trying for the longest. I've been trying, I've been praying, I've been praying, I've been trying, I've been trying and praying and praying and trying, trying and praying and praying and trying, and it just don't work. I don't, I don't know. Well, somebody's a lie. Either God is a lie or you are one or the other. I've been, I've been trying and trying and, and trying and trying and trying and trying and trying and trying to get I've been trying to get it right. I've been trying within my own strength, but not realizing that within my own strength, I've been actually going against that which I've been praying for. Because I didn't understand in chapter 3 of Ephesians, right? Starting again at, 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 at verse 14, for this reason I know, for this reason I bow my knees to the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family of heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to his riches and glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit. Yes, yes. Did you catch that, Susan? Granting you strength. Yes. Granting you strength through him. Though. See, that's where we've been missing it. I've been trying to do it through my strength and not his. I'm praying for his strength, but I've been trying to do it through mine. So actually, I've been cutting it off. Like God, you know what I'm saying? I need to, you know, I want us to do, I want to stop cussing. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I want to stop cussing. I want to show everybody around me who know me to be the pirate of the family, a drunk now. <laughs> that when they notice that I ain't cussing no more, that Christ is real. So this is what I'm going to do. Oh, messed up right there. As soon as you say this is what I'm going to do, let God out. But I've been so used to just doing it on my own. Ever since I was a little girl, I've been doing it on my own. Ever since I've been a guy, I've been by myself. I've been handling everything on my own. They left me. They talked about me. They did this to me. And they did that to me. And this and that and the third. And, and this is the way. This is the reason. This is who I am. And this is how I'm going to be. But Lord, I want you to change my life. This is what I'm going to do. But it's not. And you're still in the same situation. You know the songs that you got me going in a circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now, right now. 
around and around I go. I'm a lunatic. Because I'm doing the same thing. Expecting a change. And I'm getting frustrated at everybody else. When really, it should be myself. Lord, I want you to do a new thing in me. But I never realized that it's me. It's me. You know, your heart can be right and your mind can be wrong. Yes, it can. That's why Jesus said, renew your mind daily. Amen. 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 To understand the authority that has been invested on us, delegated on us. The reason why I can say that I'm married to my wife is because my pastor, our pastor, stood in front of many witnesses and said, by the power and authority invested in me. Yeah. 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 See, state of Michigan didn't have to be there. But they honored what he said. Oh, whoa, did you catch that? See, stay in Michigan, they have to be there, but they honored his word. Do you understand? Yeah. By the power and authority invested in you in Christ, yeah. heaven ain't got to be there, but God honors your word. Yeah. Yeah. It has to be respected on the earth. Yeah. What do you mean respected on the earth? Whenever they see me and Sister Tiffany, they know I'm her. And she's my wife. So, to those who actually get this message, when you're out and about, they know that God is your and you are his. Okay, that's like one plus one, ain't it? It's two. Okay, how you look at it? Okay, how you feel about it? It's always going to be two. I don't care how you feel. You got authority. I don't care what it look like. You got power. This is your breakthrough moment. Stop letting Satan ride your, ride your neck. Tell that fool you got to go. By the authority that's been invested in me. Oh, heaven, hallelujah, in the house, and the angels, the throne room, the position that I'm in. Satan, you have no power here. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. You got to go. This house, hallelujah, from the top to the bottom.
and make them live. Make them live. Make them live. Say it. Your situation can change just like that. Yes, sir. Just like that. Just like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord, I've been trying to do it my way. I've been trying to do it my way, but today, today, hallelujah, I submit myself like I've never submitted myself before to you. Let your strength, hallelujah, be that which I rest on. yourself in the life of the believer, yes, your people, yes, so that all together, Lord, Father God, hallelujah, we can move as one and witness your manifestations like never before. Today is your day. This is your breakthrough moment if you believe it. To them that believe, it all can change. It all has to change. In Jesus' name, that is above every name in this So go back to Mark 16. Glory be to God. Yes, yes. Glory be to God. Mark 16 and 15, he said, and he said unto them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. <laughs> and these signs will follow them who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will by no means harm them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. The doors of the church is open. 